So, hello everyone and welcome back to STW Sports and today I'm joined by Sunderland fan Josh Bunting. Well, welcome Josh and first question I'm going to ask is, how are you feeling about Sunderland going into the new League One season? Um, It's going to be, a, you know, it's another going to be another difficult season for Sunderland, I think. Um, the transfer window, I know obviously we've still got a bit to go with it, but I think if you ask most Sunderland fans, they haven't been so convinced. Signed Corey Evans, who is a good signing, and Alex Pitchard as well. But, you know, the club going into the first game of the season has no fullbacks. So, obviously, that's a big, big concern. Um, yeah, the transfer window hasn't been so successful. So, it's hard to be optimistic right now um, about Sunderland going into the new season. But if you watch them in pre-season, and I'm very... I don't think you can judge from pre-season games going into the season, but they've actually played some quite good football at times, high intensity, and they've kept the ball quite well. So that's encouraging. But, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a difficult start to the season unless rapidly that some players start coming through the door. I mean, you know, obviously one player you have lost is Charlie Wycon. He'll be returning, ironically, on the opening day with Wigan Athletic. Um, you know, how much of a blow could that be for Sunderland's chances, in your opinion? Obviously, look, he scored a lot of goals last season, but White last season depended a lot on Ada McGeady um, and, and McGeady's, you know, the assists and, and the balls in the box. That's the type of player he is. He feeds off crosses. So, I'm going to be honest, Samuel, I wasn't too disappointed to see White leave. Um, I think, don't get me wrong, look, he scored goals everywhere he's been, but the last season he was he was brilliant, absolutely fantastic. But the previous two seasons probably didn't he didn't do enough, um, and he was sort of beaten off the ball too easy. Um, but when you lose that many goals, obviously it's a blow because I'm not quite sure. I think Ross Stewart's a good player. Don't get me wrong. I think his movement is is, is great. Um, I think he's more mobile than what Wake is. But I just can't see him scoring you know thirty goals this season. So, the club need a striker. That the club really need a striker, um, as obviously as well as fullbacks. Um, so yeah, I mean, when you, like I said, I wasn't that fussed that that we did lose him. I actually thought he was going to go into the championship or, or Celtic. I was quite surprised uh, on the day that, you know, he was linked to Wigan and then he actually went there. Um, but yeah, um. When you lose that many goals, of course, it, it's going to be hard to replace. Um, so I would rather him still be at the club now than, you know, be in the situation that we are. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Lee Johnson in charge, of course, taking over midway through last season around about. Um, do you think he's the man to get Sunderland out of League One? I think he's a very good manager. Um, but with the current squad, I can't see them getting out of League One right now. unless. Before the end of the window, you know, there is rapid transfer and there is business. Um, but I think as a manager, yeah, I really rate him highly. He's a very, very good technical manager. And he, the st his style of play, his philosophy is, is, is great to watch. So I think he is the right manager, yes. But I still believe that, you know, the club need to bring more people in, especially a striker. Fullbacks, like I said, probably another centre midfielder, really. Um, I think that's a that's a position as well that, that, that needs to be brought in. Obviously, you've got Corey Evans, Alex Pritchard. You play in there, but you can play Pritchard a little bit higher if needed. Um, and I think this season he will play that little bit higher in behind a Ross Stewart because I think he'll play one up front. I don't think he'll go 4-4-2 or 4-3-3. You know, three, three. I think he'll play with, with a one up front, which will be Ross Stewart, who's a bit of a target man as well. So, Lee Johnson, yeah, I think he's a very, very good coach, very, very good manager. Certainly think he is the right man to be at the club. But unless new signings, comes, unless new signings come in, I don't think this club will be getting out of League One anytime soon. And it's frustrating um, that, it's, well, that they're in this situation with days before the season. It should have been sorted out well before. But I think, you know, it's probably an excuse, but I think, you know, coronavirus has a has had a big effect on transfers this window as well because obviously 
budgets and, and things like that and, and who do you actually sign but when you look at Ipswich and Wigan they're flying through their signings so Sunderland have got a new owner a new ambitious owner but they sort of want to go down a younger player approach which is good and I'm all for that but I just think right now I think business still needs a lot of business still needs to be done and Sunderland are quite unprepared going into the first game against Wigan on Saturday yeah, I was going to ask, do you have a prediction for that game against Wigan on Saturday right now? Unfortunately, I think Wigan will win the game. Uh, I, I, I just I just have a feeling that Wigan will Wigan will win. You know, Sunderland could surprise me and that would be fantastic. But I just think Wigan, they just look a very, very neat little squad right now. I mean, they signed Jordan Jones as well, Northern Ireland International from Rangers. He was on loan from Sunderland. Uh, he was on loan at Sunderland, sorry, from Rangers in the second half, second half of last season. And he's just signed a three-year permanent deal um, with Wigan. So he'll make his debut, you would imagine, at the stadium night on, on Saturday. And with Sunderland having no fullbacks, a tricky winger running at someone playing out of position is not the situation that you really want to be in. So I think he'll have a big effect on the game if he plays, and I would imagine he will. Sunderland sort of have a curse about them that I think Charlie White will probably score to be honest um, or Max Parr one of the two um, I just think Wigan are more prepared right now and I think Wigan are more they're further on in their preparations you know you know what I mean they, they, they've done their business early which Sunderland should have done um, and my prediction for the game would be it would actually be a 2-0 Wigan win um, and I, I hope I'm proved wrong I really do but I just can't see Sunderland winning that game right now in term, just in terms of the personnel that will probably be on that the pitch at the weekend. Yeah, I just want to ask about taking a step away from Sunderland for a moment. Um, which teams in League One are you convinced by this year? Because looking at the league, it's one of the strongest we've probably seen in the third tier for mm. a very long time. Uh, any teams that are standing out for you? Ipswich. Uh, if Ipswich don't finish in the top two, that'll be a big surprise. I've been... I think their business has been absolutely fantastic. You know, Joe Piggott, he's one to watch out for this season. Very, very neat little finisher as well. Um, I've just, I really liked who they've brought in. Obviously, Scott Fraser from MK Dons. I think that's a neat signing for them as well. Neat and tidy player in the middle of the park. Switches the play well and effectively. And also, actually, now that I say his old club, I think MK Dons will be one to watch this year. Obviously, Russell Martin, the manager, left to Swansea City. And I think... Before that happened, I would have put Swans or sorry, I would have put MK Dons in the in that playoff zone. I'm not too sure now. It'd be interesting to see sort of what happens there on the managerial front. I know Dean Lewington's take Dean Lewington, club legends taking him at the weekend. But again, I really like their business. I really, really like their business. MK Dons, they're putting in a, a nice little squad. So they'll be ones to watch this year as well. So and Wigan as well. Like I mean, to be fair, again in terms of transfer business. I think for League One, we're gonna have, we're gonna have brought in some very very good players. Um, so yeah, Wigan, Ipswich, and MK Dons, they would be the the three to watch out for in my opinion this season in in League One. Also Portsmouth, um, because you never really know what you're going to get from them. I, I'm really not sure. So they haven't really caught my eye, but I think the Danny Cowley, the Cowley brothers, sort of. Automatically make them ones to watch for me because I think they they do overachieve with clubs, um, and I think that they are certainly the, the sort of the right management team to, to bring Portsmouth back to the championship. So, yeah, Portsmouth are ones to watch as well this season. And yeah, whereabouts do you think Sunderland will finish then? Looking at the current squad, whereabouts do you put them in the league table? This is a really hard question. Um, I I'm being realistic and. I'm being truthful. Right now, about seventh or eighth, I can't see them getting even into the playoffs, which is so disappointing, really. I mean, when you look at the the past few seasons, I I think Sunderland will rely too much on Adam McGeady. I really do. And if a club takes Adam McGeady out of the game, I think Elliot Hamilton's had a really good preseason. I think he's been on on, on real good form and, and he's looked sharp. But I think... If you take Aidan McGee out of the game, then I'm not really sure where Sunderland are going to create chances from, and that's a real concern, obviously. Um, so yeah, um, seventh, seventh or eighth, which is 
really, really disappointing. I don't see many goals in the team right now. Ross Stewart, I think, again, like I said, he's he's more mobile than what White was, and and he makes good runs. I mean, he had a, he scored a good goal actually against Hull last Friday and in, in the final preseason game, and that was an encouraging game against Hull. Um, he played some good stuff at times, but I just. I just I don't see them having enough goals right now, and that's a, obviously a major concern going into a new season. And we're only days away from it. Um, and defensively as well, like I say, no fullbacks, centre backs, Tom Flanagan, Bailey Wright, Bailey Wright injury prone at times. So, yeah, I mean Callum Doyle, he's looked at he's looked a good signing over preseason. Only seventeen years old, unknown from Manchester City, but seventeen years old and coming into a season with a lot of pressure under him. So can he handle it? Obviously, the early signs of preseason say yes, he can because he looks brilliant. So, I'm just worried about going forward and defensively right now without fullbacks. Obviously, that's a concern because it's a big position on the pitch to, to fill, and you don't want to have players who don't really play their playing playing in that position in the league because if you do that, you'll get taken apart by by the better teams. Yeah, and uh, as for your League One winner, then you talked about teams to watch earlier on. Do you have one team who you think could win the division this year, and who are you predicting at this moment in time? In the moment of time, I'm predicting Ipswich. Um, I just think that their business has been, you know, it's been sensational. I think when you're a League One club and you can bring in Connor Chaplin from, you know, the Championship, um, I think uh, obviously speaks big volumes. I think Chaplin. He's sort of he's done it everywhere he's been. He's a he's a goal scorer. He's creative. He's quick. He's tricky. So I think that was a outstanding signing as well. Um, so yeah, obviously, and I, I really like the goalkeeper as well. Um, her her decade, who they signed from Salford City. I think he's one of the best goalkeepers in the EFL. So they've got a really good pair of safe hands behind them as well. So obviously you've got Scott Fraser. I just I just really like what Ipswich have done. In, in in the in the window, so yeah, I think right now at the moment of time, I think Ipswich will win the league. And uh, final predict last question I'm going to ask you is your golden boot winner in League One. Always interested to ask this one at the start of every season. Wow, that's a great question. It's a brilliant question. Um, wow, golden boot winner, winner. Do you know, little dark horse, but. MK Dawn signed Moisa from Peterborough. And that was one of those signings that sort of caught my eye this year. Um in this window. I think for League One, I think he's a he's he's a, he's a top player to have. Um but I'm gonna go with one of the Ipswich boys because I think they'll go up. And I think Joe Pickett really stood out for AFC Wimbledon last year. And AFC Wimbledon were near the bottom. Now, with Ipswich creating chances, you would imagine this year, I think Joe Pickett is one of the most clinical strikers that there is about in that league. So I'm going to go Ipswich and, and Joe Pickett. Yep, fair enough. Well, that's all we've got time for anyway, Josh. But thank you very much for joining me and good luck to Sunderland in the coming season. No worries. Thank you, Sam. <laughs>